So given that today is World Blood Donor Day, I thought it would actually be quite important that I actually pass you guys through the blood compatibility check. So grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at blood compatibility checks. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. Grab a piece of paper, grab your pen, and let's go. So remember that today is World Blood Donor Day on the 14th of June. So please make sure that if you are a donor or if you haven't donated blood before and you have you don't have any other underlying illnesses, please pass through the blood bank, get your blood donated. Remember that your blood can actually save an individual's life. Do not forget to pass by the blood bank and actually donate blood. Not just today, but on any other day, do not forget to donate blood. It saves a lot of lives. So before we actually decide to actually transfuse the patients, there are certain prerequisites that we must actually check for. The first thing is that we must actually check the patient's details and check that the patient's details are correct, meaning that you should check and confirm with the patient themselves. You must check on the patient file. You must check on the blood unit that you're receiving. You must check also on the printout that you receive from the blood bank and all four of these things must correlate with each other. If there is any discrepancy in any of them, you must make sure that you counter check everything to make sure that you have the right equipment and you have the right personnel and you have the right indications. Because once you give the person the wrong blood, there is a potential for a reaction to happen and there is even a potential for a patient to actually die. The second thing that you must actually check for is that the patient has consented Usually now setting when you are doing the cross matching and filling out the form, there's a section where the patient actually has to sign given that they have consented. And the general outline or the general consensus is that once you actually even send that cross match, the patient has already been told that this blood is meant to do a cross match and to actually come back and to transfuse into this person. Because some people actually reject blood transfusions because of certain religious practices and religious beliefs. So if they do reject the blood transfusion, please make sure that you indicate in the file and they must sign in the file that they have rejected this blood transfusion because it's potentially life-saving. And if this patient actually dies, it will be you whose uh, license is on the line because you had the option of transfusing this patient and they'll ask you, why didn't you transfuse this patient? And you can't even just go by word of mouth even if you're taken to court. Then the third thing that you must check for is, of course, the indication for the transfusion, which is usually very clear in the file. So if you see there's a complete blood count or a full blood count in the file, you can simply check the indication. Maybe it's a severe anemia. Maybe there is a sickle cell patient that has come in in an acute chest syndrome and they need a transfusion. So make sure that you check clearly what the indication is all about. Also check if this patient has had any prior transfusions. And if they have had any prior transfusions, check how well the transfusion how well the transfusions went check the vitals and see if the vitals were stable throughout the transfusion if the patient incurred any reactions throughout the transfusion if anything was documented in the patient file concerning the transfusion then once you have done this you must then now go and uh, ensure that you have the printout from the uh, blood bank and use this printout to actually cross check the unit of blood and ideally this must be done by two health practitioners I see many times it being done by one person, but ideally, and the gold standard is that it must be done by two health practitioners. One person must be checking through that printout. Another person must be checking the blood uh, pack unit. Then what certain things are you going to need before you actually try start a transfusion? Like I said, you need two healthcare practitioners to counter check the blood pack. You're also going to be needing the intact blood pack unit or units, depending on whatever you're given from the blood bank. Number three, you're going to have a giving set or an administration, a blood administration set. And you must make sure that it has two filters. The 
giving sets that we use for the IV fluids are not the same ones that we're going to be using for the blood transfusion. So make sure that you have the right giving set. Then you should also have the blood pressure machine as well as a thermometer to be checking your blood pressure, to be checking your temperature. And also ideally, you should also have a pulse oximeter to be checking, of course, your saturations. You should have pre-medication drugs as well as emergency drugs available, readily available in case if this patient actually undergoes a transfusion reaction. So drugs like epinephrine, hydrocortisone, some antiemetics, antihistamines, and even Lasix, which is a diuretic, also known as furosemide must be present before you actually start the transfusion. And you must also have a healthcare practitioner that's going to be monitoring this patient closely and actually documenting the vitals uh, when this patient actually is supposed to get a transfusion. So here is an example of a blood bank printout. So I've actually redacted this document and removed the name, which is supposed to be at the top there. And I've only left the age, which is a nine-year-old female. So this was obviously in the pediatric department. And then the second part, which I've blurred out over there, is supposed to be the patient's file number. And then, of course, this is in the pediatric hospital. And it was referred by a certain doctor who I've also blurred out. Then this is how the form comes up. So the test that was ordered is an X-match. And the clinical data, the indication was severe anemia. So this was done on the 7th of this should be february 2023 and the blood was collected at 10 hours then the specimen was received at 10 43. so here you have the patient's blood group the abo group is o and the anti-d uh, group is of course positive so this person's blood group is o positive then the donor group is o positive as well the donor ID is 5023004577 and it's a red cell concentrate and the expiry date is 070323. So they also did an indirect Coombs test which was compatible. Then with the immediate spin it was compatible. With the indirect Coombs test it was compatible and the final result is that the blood was compatible. And of course it even documents who collected the blood. Of course that I've blurred that out for ethical reasons and also privacy of the patient and the workers at the hospital. So then how exactly are you going to document this information in the patient's file? So remember, you need two people to be present for you to do this. And here I've already had a template of uh, a patient's file. So suppose now we're going to document this in the patient's file. So the first thing that you're going to be writing, obviously, is your name at the top. So I'm going to write that Dr. Kazevu at the top over there. Then I'm going to write the date, which is the 14th of June, 2023. I'm going to write the place, maybe this is pediatric medical ward, and I'm going to write the time, which is, let's say I was doing this at 11.45. So these are always preliminaries for everything that you do in the patient file, make sure that you write the date you write the time, you write where you're doing this particular thing, and you write your name at the top. Then, obviously, this is going to be a blood compatibility check. So I'm going to write that this is a blood compatibility, compatibility check. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to uh, write is, of course, the patient's details. So patient details. Some people decide to start with the donor details. I just love to start with the patient's details. So the blood group, the blood group of the patient. Of course, you check on that form that I depicted on the previous slide. So the blood group of the patient is going to be O positive. Then you come now to the donor details. So the donor's details is the blood group for the donor. The blood group is going to be O positive as well. Then you come now to the batch number, which is that number that I read to you on the previous uh, slide. So this is just a random number that I'm going to put 52204182235. Then you also write the date of expiry, which is let's say 14th of 0823 then we write the date of collection it was maybe collected on the 13th 
zero six twenty three. We write the product. Of course, it's a red cell concentrate RCC, and how many units we were given? So one unit. Okay, this is how you write the sign, the symbol for unit. If you were given in mils, then you do indicate the mils. If, for example, it's a pediatric patient and you're given 250 mils, you indicate that this is 250 mils. Then after you, you do this, you then write your comment. So our comment here is going to be that this blood is compatible. Blood is compatible. Compatible. Okay, so given that this blood is compatible, you now have to formulate your plan of how you're going to be administering this blood. And remember that how do we know this compatibility? We should be able to know how the ABO blood grouping is, which blood groups can donate to which other blood groups, which blood groups can't receive from other blood groups. So that's a topic for another day. So we come now to our plan. Okay, so number one. We want to transfuse this patient slowly, transfuse slowly. And usually after, uh, we tr usually transfuse for a duration of about four hours. So transfuse slowly over four hours, four hours. Then number two, we want to monitor our vitals. So monitor our vitals. And ideally these vitals should be monitored at least every 15 minutes. So we can do this quarter hourly. So there are some people that monitor it quarter hourly for the first uh, one hour, then half hourly for the next hours. But I just like to do it quarter hourly for the entire transfusion. Then the third thing that's going to be there is, of course, you give this patient Lasix, Lasix at one milligram per kg. Per kg, suppose this person is weighing about 25 kg. So let's give them 25 milligrams as an IV stat to get rid of that excess fluid that's going to be there in when you give this blood transfusion so that you prevent them from tipping into heart failure. Then the other thing that we're going to be doing for this patient after monitoring the vitals is if transfusion reaction is noted, if transfusion reaction is noted, noted, what we should do is that we should stop transfusion stop transfusion and inform the MO on call, inform the medical officer on call. So this is what we do when we are writing down our, or documenting in the patient's file about a blood com compatibility test. Then of course, you're going to be signing at the bottom because everything that you write in the patient's file must be signed to make sure that you are the one who has written and no one adds anything to your plan. So this is how we actually document in the patient's file. And I hope you have really learned a lot. Remember that this is the world's blood donor day. Do not forget to donate just the unit of blood because once you donate blood, you tend to save a lot of lives. Thank you for spending your time to actually listen to this lecture on blood compatibility check. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.